So welcome to the Energy Medicine Revolution Masterclass. I'm Cynthia Harrison. I'm from Rhombus Healing Arts. And we have been looking into tools and techniques and ways of knowing to bring about shifts and change and evolution in our physical and energetic systems. So everybody who's on the series has wisdom to share with us to extend ourselves in, uh, well, whichever way you choose to be the, you know, your full potential or your most magnificence, as I say. And today we have what I'm calling um, revolutionaries. So we have another revolutionary, <laughs> Mr. Brian Besco. And I'll tell you a little bit about Brian before we start. So Brian has dedicated his life to planetary evolution so he's perfect for this series he's best known as a master builder and owner of twisted sage studios i love that name too where they create leading edge energy tools so in the past years he's assisted in the clearing of planetary grid systems while bringing through and utilizing new energy systems the cleaning and clearing work on cosmic proportions is where brian thrived and grew within the old paradigm so his soul's calling still remains with bringing through the higher consciousness with tools uh, i'm assuming some techniques and you know the way that these tools are made uh, just by looking at them they're absolutely gorgeous and which are anchored into the fields of the tensor rings he and his family produce in uh, South Dakota. So I want to welcome you, Brian, and um, I'm so pleased to meet you and to introduce you to our community. <laughs> so I'll formally welcome you. <laughs> Thank you, Cynthia. It's an honor to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. I'm already excited by just seeing all the uh, bits and pieces behind you. you look, um, geometry to me is like probably what shoes and handbags are to most women <laughs> or, or like chocolate. It's like you're in a chocolate shop to me. So seeing what you do and uh, your little bits and pieces behind you and your website is amazing. So uh, I've put some links up around the place on Facebook and uh, also in the in the emails because um, uh, honestly, I mean, I, you can see, you can see, I'm excited. It's, it's, <laughs> it's amazing stuff. So I'm so pleased. And, and um, look, where, where did all this start for you? Maybe we could just get a little bit of where all this started for you. Like why, why did you get into geometries and understanding of how it can Oh, certainly. Um, you know, I grew up very science minded and, you know, non-religious and everything. Um, and then my sister, Brenda, and you'll hear me refer to my sister, Brenda Schnoes quite a bit. She used to channel the elders three. Um, she brought through the earth elemental symbols such as Hedica, yeah. the symbol of the water elemental. It's, um, which Hedica, that, that symbol of the, the spirit of water, um, unlike the Triskelion that has three legs, this has one center and two legs. Um, and as we were getting this Hedica out into the world, you know, it just was really neat to see people who really resonated with the symbol. You know, a lot of people had been drawing it since they were kids, tattooing it on their body. A lot of people had remembrances from Atlantis with this symbol. And so I started to go a little bit more from the science into the esoteric, the spiritual, you know, especially after my sister Brenda started talking about the Merkaba, the sacred space, of the heart and her guide Thoth that walked with her. And I didn't really Thank give you. it much thought. <laughs> yeah. And until, you know, I, it blew that science side of my mind. Once I experienced distance healing from her. And, you know, and once, uh, once your mind expands uh, out of that more scientific into the more spiritual realms, you just can't go back. 
Mm. And that was about, oh, I'd say about 10 years ago. So I've been on a really fast trajectory with this. Um, again, as we were getting that symbol of the Hedica, the water elemental, out into the world, there was a couple of gals who wrote um, the book, The New Science of Water, Dances with Water, which were actually featured in the second edition here with the tensor rings. But they called me up and said, well, all your guys' channeled information backs our science with that Hedica, with the Triskel. And so, you know, it just pushed it farther down the path. Um, and then once I started to uh, play more in the energy realm, I found a, out about, um, I was doing my own dowsing. I was a self-taught geo dowser, just like Slim Sperling. And Slim Sperling's the one who brought this ancient technology of the tensor rings back into our lifetime, into our remembrance. Um, because the tensor rings, they're... Yeah, uh, Slim was using, uh, Slim and others, because he worked with several other people behind the scenes. Uh, Slim is just the most well-known for rediscovering this technology. Um, they were using these sacred measurements that come from the different pyramids. Like there's <laughs> measurements like 8.3 inches, that's the sine wave of hydrogen. Yeah. Um, and all these other cubit measures, and they would use these in their geodowsing. They would lay them on the ground and any non-beneficial geomagnetic lines would hit these rods and it would go up and over or down and under these rods. And so uh, Slim and friends were looking for a different way to utilize these, these um, straight line cubit measures. So they discovered the rings. Actually, they put them into a single ring and that created a dual field, a spin in one direction and a spin in another direction that was a beneficial and a non-beneficial spin. So they found that they fold the wire in half and they twist it. And then once they have the twisted wire, they cut it to a very specific measure. We cut these to the hundred thousandths of a centimeter here in the studio. Um, and then once you bring the ends of the wire back together, it's creating a flow this way and a flow this way because mm -hmm. copper is a crystal structure, so it creates a piezoelectric flow within the wire. And so and that's kind of the science of it, is that you have the flow, the piezoelectric, and then you have the very specific measures that create the antennas. Um, so tensor fields, um, the tensor fields are unlike any energy out there. They're, they're creating a field. Mm -hmm. And so within this field, uh, like the gals that dances with water, they've been able to show how you put water within this column of energy from the rings, and it brings water to its original crystalline structure, and it makes it lighter in weight in the lab because it's putting that positive right-hand spin of the water molecule. And it's basically creating ormus within the water, uh, kind of like how white powdered gold, you can put it onto a scale, and that physical powder of white powder gold goes in and out of this physical dimension. And that's what is going on with the water is it is, is bringing it to that higher vibratory state. Yeah. Um, we've had, you know, people testing the, these, uh, the water from the rings uh, with GDV photo imaging, which is um, something that Dr. Emoto worked with um, a gentleman who did GDV photo imaging and that gentleman who was running the cameras would show that Emoto's water would actually go clear off of the scale. And that's what these rings are doing as well. They're doing that with water and with oils. We've seen it with coconut oil where it takes the vibratory level of that oil clear off that scale for GDV. Wow. Um, so, you know, there is some science behind the tensor rings. Um, but there's so much of it that is not proven by science. I mean, you can find that, like the original ring that Slim made, it oscillated at 144,000 megahertz, and, or 144 megahertz, um, 144,000 hertz. Now that was something that you could actually find the measurable frequency within the ring by dropping an oscilloscope. But as things progressed, um, you know, Slim worked with a mathematician to create a 177 megahertz ring, and then somebody channeled in a 188 megahertz. Uh, the 333 megahertz, we believe, comes from King Solomon's Temple. Uh, someone channeled that one in, or actually doused that one in, a master dowser. 
And we've had a few other rings that were doused in, um, even one by one of the past presidents of the American Society of Dowsing brought in the galactic cubit, um, mm. that specific measurement. But then um, we started to get into these, these rings that would not produce a frequency within a measurable frequency because it would bring through so much. So there wasn't just a single frequency like the standard Teotihuacan unit, which is really a huge one over the planet, that unit of measure. Um, and it also produces a frequency in the straight line, which is uh, the golden light wands. Um, they're a very specific straight line cubit measure that does fantastic things. The, can, the, can you, sorry to butt in. Can you tell us those fantastic things at some point? We'll come back to that because I don't know about those. I, I'm sure I saw them on your, yeah. So yeah. Planning the seeds uh, later. <laughs> <laughs> well, because basically um, the whole background with this is the tensor fields themselves. And mm -hmm. then what is put into the field is truly the miracles of magic right there. Okay. Um, because instead of just a, a frequency emitter, these are creating a field. And mm -hmm. so within that field, you can start to bring through all kinds of things like... Um, all of our tools are created here on this higher dimensional plane. They are anchored into the physical through the sacred measurements. So these are actually just placeholders for the energetic tools we're creating here. Now, don't get me wrong. The tensor fields in themselves are what are making water lighter in weight. They're what are restructuring electromagnetics, um, like our cell phone tabs. Mm. We've done biofeedback studies on these that show it makes your organs function better. It aligns your chakras and energy bodies. So basically we are repurposing the energy mm. from not only phones, all electrical, um, harp, radionics, geomagnetic, geopathic, um, all your basic EMF, as well as, energies on many other planes like such as the dark dense energies or such as lower vibratory consciousness so these rings are a physical anchoring just like our bodies just like our bodies that we exist through all these different levels and layers so do the rings um so where the, where the true potency and power of these guys comes from, like I say, is those etheric aspects of these tools that my sister Brenda and I create in that higher dimensional plane. Um, and through this past decade of becoming uh, a little bit more awakened, I've, I've actually, I totally believe that I have been working on this for lifetimes on these etheric tools kind of like the golden light rod. Now this isn't one that I made that I'm aware of. This is actually based on an ancient tool that is older than our galaxy, probably older than the universe. Energetically, it is a golden white rod about 22 inches tall. And it's something that will clear timelines, realities. It will close portal vortexes. It'll move geomagnetic lines or else clear them. Um, and so it's doing things for the environment as well as the person and all of your aspects all the way to the soul level. But it's something that the human can't necessarily wield. But we anchor it here into the physical through the sacred measurement. And then we actually have a video on YouTube that gives you the attunement to where you don't need this actual rod. You can just go through the attunement and bring in that energetic one. And then when you do, you can clear your entire space. Um, you can clear your own stuff. Um, it helps to clear perceptions, beliefs that no longer serve us. Um, so that's, uh, that's the golden light rod. But all the other tools that we've brought in recently um, from my sister Brenda and her guides are these new geometries that have never been on the planet. You know, I was telling you, Thoth just walks with my sister. He's just there. He's kind of stepped back over the past year or two. And Metatron is like her right hand. Um, 
And so Metatron's been bringing in a lot of these new geometries that have never been on the planet before. And some of those geometries are in relation to these golden fire rings that we create. Now, again, we can create straight line measurements that will bring through the energies of that golden fire ring, mm -hmm. as well as these rings. Um, and the reason that we call these the golden fire rings is because all the work that we do through consciousness that we put into the energetic aspect of these tools can come through here. Now, within the rings, in the beginning, when we started out with that galactic cubit measure, that was not a static frequency. It would just change depending on who held on to it and what they needed at that time. We first started to anchor into those etheric templates of the galactic ascension rings, all the frequencies and properties of the plant, crystal, and mineral kingdoms of the earth, as well as all the earth elementals, such as the hedica, the water, the chisel, the fire, ether, and on and then also the rays of light that come from the greater councils of light and so basically these rings are so full of so many different things that can come through but our soul acts as the filter mm. so that way we're not getting just blown away by everything that comes through here your soul is the filter for these mm. So they, they, they're like gate, they're portals. They, they are. Yeah, uh, they I mean, to... I know that you're using different language, but uh, that, yeah, they're, they're portals. And, you know, that's, yes. yeah, I, I now, I know everything that you've talked about, I'm so aligned within in my world. So now I know that that sense to um, connect with you was <laughs> just bam on. Um, beautiful and uh, maybe I'll talk to you um, off camera about that at some point but, uh, sure. um, but yeah portals just so that people uh, understand coming from different you know uh, ways of describing things right Anyways, that jargon portals, doorways yeah <laughs> yeah that jargon can get in our way sometimes <laughs> Well, there's yep. different ways to, to get uh, people to, to hear us as well. Sometimes we have to use different language. And, um, you know, I'm sitting here listening and, and feeling and, and taking it all in and writing notes. That's what I'm doing. I'm writing lots of notes to sort of see where we can go sort of um, in different directions if need be. Um, but I'm like, these are portals. They're, they're doorways. They're openings. Yeah. So I just wanted to pop that in. Sorry to um, oh, take you off track at all. Well, and so a beautiful thing about these tools in, in the, the soul being the filter for what comes through. Mm -hmm. Also, all of our etheric tools are always guided, guarded, protected. Um, so I have a go-between between me being the physical anchoring, anchor when I'm creating these tools or, you know, when we're anchoring them here in. Whoops. Hang on a minute. Uh, you just got to, I'll keep going. Keep going. Oh. Sorry. And so, Something happened to <laughs> no audio. so our go between is, um, Heimdall, the Arcturian, he's just one of my guides. Um, he just keeps everything clean and clear between there and here. So that way we can more trust in those authentic tools. Because, um, yeah, we've ran into a lot of tools that are only physically constructed, you know, and those are more like your frequency emitters that work on that fourth dimensional plane, you know, color, sound, things like that. But yeah. then when you get up to those higher dimensional planes, then... Um, you know, then we make sure that they're connected all the way through. So that way, again, as they're working on every level and layer that we exist on, yes. so do they. Um, okay. Okay, I'm, sorry, I'm so excited because, we're, you know, that's why I was saying I don't use a lot of tools purely because of that. And there comes a time when, you know, you, I'll have a lot of people say to me, you know, I'm not practicing anymore. I'm not doing what I used to do. And I say, yeah, because it's a different frequency and it's not um, actually uh, uh, a tool that's going to benefit you. It could be a tool that you do because it, you enjoy it or, you know, you like the look of something. 
Um, but a lot of the things that I used to use are just ornaments now. They don't right. function the same because they're not on these other levels. So I love that because um, it is key. It's key, I feel, uh, to the evolution of the, um, our energetic fields, our consciousness, our conscious evolution. You know, what are we going to be doing now? What, what ways of um, knowing are we going to bring into the world to bridge, you know, uh, the new ways, I suppose, is what, you know, best way I can find to say it. <laughs> <laughs> it's said perfectly too, yes. Um, and, and that's what's remarkable about these tools is that they're for every level and layer of, mm. of where you're at. I mean, you can drop one of these on the street and a person picks it up and it is going to bring through everything with grace and ease for them. All that clearing work, the connecting work, everything. Mm -hmm. um, and again, the reason that we call these the golden fire rings and a, that cubit measure again comes from those new geometries that are coming onto the planet. But the energetics of these, um, we learned how to activate that trifle golden flame, that sacred heart. That's something that um, Jeanette Crowley that wrote the Eagle and the Condor soul body fusion. Um, she channels Mark and the great white brotherhood and others. And we do a lot of work with her. And it's like, we, we do a lot of leapfrogging with her, but she was able to bring through that sacred heart activation so simply and easily. And we took that and put that into the energetics of the rings. Um, then we also bring through uh, just all of the work that we learn and that we do. We take that, we put that into the ring so that all those activations and everything is available within them. Um, Any more with these golden fire with the, the generators, which are the spherical here, uh, the Genesa crystal, which is the, the four rings, Versus this that creates a column of energy. This creates a sunshine effect. This has about a half mile sphere of influence. But the golden fire, unlike the previous rings, is working with that higher soul aspect of anybody and everything. So kind of like a few years ago when we were doing that, that larger clearing work, um, you know, there came to be a point when sore soul said, well, you're not taking these guys back to the central sun for recycling. You're going to do the work. You're going to assist them. You're going to help them. And so what we started to do when we work with any of these, these bigger consciousnesses outside the planet or wherever, or in the other dimensions, we go right to their heart and we find their soul's fire and we ignite that and we connect them with their higher soul self because everything is divine. And so as we connect them, then they drop their agendas and walk away. And so that's kind of like with this generator. Um, I've seen this thing put downtown LA in, in a park that I know. And within that whole area, it is clearing entity attachments. Um, it's just clearing all the dense energy, the lower consciousness energy, everything because it is connecting it and changes it because i mean we even see like dark dense energy as nothing more than compact energy mm. we put our divine awareness to it and it changes it mm. you know and it's kind of like our cell phone tabs that we're not trying to block anything we're transforming it into yeah that's it something more beneficial everything everything is energy so, uh, you know, we, we don't know who's going to be listening to this and uh, I love where you're at and where you're going, but uh, I suppose I just want to say that for people who are new to energy, but I don't yeah. want this series or this, uh, I really don't want this series to be, I want us to go into these um, places if need be and then if they've got questions, we can um, you know, go there or on the Facebook page or they can connect with you or whatever because it's time to really start um, really expanding uh, our knowing, our understandings, 
And if this is stretching some of you, great. <laughs> and I can ask I, questions if you need to. We, I can, uh, I, you know, um, Brian can see them, I can see them, and we can maybe discuss some of that. But yes, en everything is energy, and we're not destroying or creating anything. We just, you, as you said, we. Uh, how did you put it, Brian? When you were saying about the dark, you just um, transform, or, or not even it, transforming it. It's yeah, it's yeah, it just turns that dense energy into into it more expansive. Mm. And you know, I had like I say, I had that science background. I wasn't into any of the woo woo stuff. I don't read or follow a lot of that new agey stuff just because it seems so far out there. Um, but even though a lot of the experiences I talked about seem so far out there, it's just from experiential with myself and with others in my circle. Um, you know, like I say, after you start to see magic and miracles, you can't go back. And exactly. And then you can stand in your strength, right? Then you can <laughs> stand there and say without flinching, Thor bought this in. Um, oh, Toth, sorry. Um, uh, your, um, your guide, uh, uh, I, I don't remember the name because I haven't heard of, him. Oh, sure. Actually, Heimdall, he's, uh, Heimdall. if you ever seen the movie Thor, he's that badass gatekeeper of the Rainbow Bridge. Oh, maybe that's why <laughs> Thor came in. I was like, why did I say Thor? <laughs> yep, so he's actually an Arcturian, you know. Oh, really? The way we oh, wow. understand it. Okay, so, you know, for a scientist, uh, generally, you know, they wouldn't be talking about uh, that sort of thing. So you can stand there because of your direct experience, and I think that's the key. Um, when you have direct experience, it's no longer uh, uh, information, it's knowledge, it's knowing. And you can stand there strongly and say, this is what I do, this is how it works, this is this, and it's just is. And if you don't, if other people aren't on board, okay. You plant some good seeds along the way. So, yeah. you know, we live in a tiny community of 124 people here in South Dakota. and. Oh, wow. You know, and I kind of grew up in this region and, you know, my, my sister, she's a farmer rancher. She used to own bars for several years and, um, you know, and she, yet she does everything that she does. Um, she's out there on that leading edge of the expansion of creation. Um, but, you know, yet again, it's, it's the experiential and, you know, we've had friends with fist sized tumors that disappear in a couple of weeks. We've had you know, we build this 13 foot tall tower. We have people that fly and drive from all over the world that, you know, their experiences, you know, they, a lot of people claim that it clears cancer, addictions, all kinds of stuff. So, you know, once you experience these things for your own self, I mean, mm. and, and that's kind of what I like to do anywhere around here too. When I'm talking to anybody is I'll totally speak my truth and just kind of allow that to sink in for people and and they don't have to accept it at, at all but it still it helps to stretch and plant those seeds because yeah. um and and that's the beautiful thing too about these tools is that energetically they they come through the screen so anybody who watches this they also receive the those energies from them mm. and the reason we call these the golden fire rings is because again it activates that sacred heart it uh, activates the quantum mind with the infinities uh, connecting the left and right brain hemispheres connecting into that quantum mind uh, bringing in those fields of universal peace so whether a person recognizes any of this or not um, it, it is there for the soul to decide whether it can bring any of that through for them um, oh, can you see um, one of the comments uh, I'm not sure what the first name is, it just says G, uh, but he's got a testimonial. He says, I actually have a testimony. I used the tools and it cleared my brain, the brain tumor I had. And he says, Beautiful. Is uh, this Ginger? Uh, it's G Rogers. <laughs> so, is Ginger. Is it? so you know who it is. Oh, yeah. And I've been able, um, I've not been able to tell Brian yet because I've just found out. So, oh, oh can yeah. you feel that? Um, I've got tears. That's that's what this work is about, isn't it? Uh, it? 
It is. That's where my motivation is, is because we totally hear the miracles of magic that happen every day. And it's not, yeah, so like I say, it's it's beyond our intentions Ooh. and it's beyond <laughs> us doing the work. Wow, these stuff. beautiful. Oh, so. that's, that's amazing. Yeah, and I mean, as I'm speaking to you, uh, you know, we're, we're all watching you speak. It's those geometries are just there. Um, so it is like a activation. Um, so I'll stop butting in and let you uh, speak more about the different types of, um, so we've got the, the ring and we've got the more uh, 3D uh, geometries um, and the differences in those. Um, and the towers, I did see, uh, you see, you've got YouTube of the towers, haven't you? Have you? I've seen um, some clips, but I'm not sure if they're on YouTube or not. Yeah, we we actually have um, a, quite a few videos out there with the, with the uh, the Ascension Chambers, the five D animators, and you know some of them are walking through people through meditations using it, and some of them are just interviews with people that are using the chambers. Mm -hmm. um, and we're actually creating that uh, the the third generation of these here as we speak, so that'll be out later this summer. Um, but the chambers are basically just, uh, we use these geometries, which is the, the six petals in here is the seed of life, and then we ratchet it to create the 12 petals. And we call this the tube torus because it actually creates a toroidal field within here. Yeah. And so this is part of the chamber that's up above a person. And then they're standing on that flower of life back here. We have those in like a floor plate. I'm actually standing on one. And that creates those columns of energy. So again, the sacred geometry, um, this was actually a crop circle in 2009. And by people just actually looking at that pattern is bringing through the awakening codes. Yes. But then, you know, and that's the same with the, the expanded version of the flower of life, which we call the fruit of life. Um, it's just bringing through those codes. But then once we mix it with the tensor rings, these are creating light and within light is that information mm -hmm. uh, kind of like I talk about the tensor fields, but within that field, within that, that column of light comes information. And this all resonates with our DNA uh, as well as with the more on the physical, with the water um, in everything within our body. So these tools will raise that frequency and vibration of your body. Um, mm -hmm. Mm. we have gosh, we just have a lot of different tools some of them are based again on those straight line cubit measures mm -hmm. and um, most of them are the rings you know we have the tensor field generators that mm. collapse that you can wear around your wrist oh um, wow your wrist all the time. <laughs> um, <laughs> those are fun yeah. um, you know so we just have a variety of tools and they're can you just you, the energy differently is all. Yeah, can I can I just ask you to um, explain a little bit more um, because you have touched on it, but I think it's important to understand that the length of the uh, material that you're using is, uh, you know, the the sacred frequency, so to speak, right. the cubic. Right. Um, which we touched on last night, so that's why I'm bringing it up because we touched on it in a different way in regards to um, the measurements within um, particular temples at different sites. So each site had a different frequency, which is um, you're using different language, but I'm just sort of pulling it together. And then what you've done is create that into, you know, the circles. So it's the... Uh, it's the frequency of the length, then you've connected the two, right? And there's a whole another bunch of science around con the connecting the two. But how you've, um, my understanding, so I'll get you to explain it uh, better, but how it's been ratcheted or the way that it's been ratcheted is significant too as far as I can feel or understand. So could you just touch on that a little if? Oh, certainly. Um, so again, going back to when Slim Sperling and friends were working with those straight line cubit measures, um, 
like Douglas Benjamin. He's actually the gentleman who discovered these six different measurements, these cubit measures in the Great Pyramid. They were uh, two right triangles right above the king's chamber. Um, so Slim and Friends found that uh, through Douglas Benjamin. Now, Douglas Benjamin did some, some testing with these, and he found that one of these, that's the 25-inch one, you break that down into thirds, into that 8.3 inches, and that is the actual sine wave of the hydrogen atom. So mm -hmm. because of the very, the, those very specific measures, they, they relate to other energetic things. Um, then the standard Teotihuacan unit, which is, comes from the city of Teotihuacan in Mesoamerica, the Temple of the Sun and the Temple of the Moon, but it has also been found in the Great Pyramids in that complex. It's also been found in the measurements between sacred sites. So it has been used for the geomancy, the placement of sacred sites on the planet. Um, that specific measurement is also in relation to uh, the diameter and the circumference of the Earth. Graham Hancock did a fantastic video on that standard Teotihuacan unit. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one of the measures that we use in our balance and harmony rings. Um, we call them balance and harmony because that's the main energetics that come through them. Um, so we also have a website called Sacred Measures. In sacredmeasures.com, we, we give these measurements out to people, and we also teach people how to make the tensor rings. Um, and we have free videos online to do all that. Oh, look so. At look at <laughs> yeah. so yeah there's people all over I'm a the world maker. i'm a maker as well so i mean I'd, I'd love to show you not right now but in a, at another time i'll send you what i used to make um and the geometries that used to come through and you know it all makes sense but uh yay cool yeah so i mean and and we've taken it a step farther where we found those etheric templates that i've created through lifetimes and we're teaching other people out there who are making the tools how to create those templates in five minutes, yeah. how to create the energetic aspect of those tools. Cause there's, there's very few people on the planet who are making energy tools that have the etheric, that higher version of the tools, That's you know, geometry is one of them because, you know, geometry, sacred geometry, uh, geometry is simply information. It's yeah. a higher form of math. And so when you're using geometries in the physical, you're, that's building a bridge. But to consciously create these tools, like we have a meter ring that you put onto your electrical meter, and because it works with the consciousness of electricity, the consciousness of the copper, the consciousness of the earth elementals that the electrical is grounded into, it is changing the whole frequency of a household. Because a home in the United States uses a 60 hertz is what the electrical runs, which interferes with the, geo or with the electromagnetics of the heart. Um, and so that 60 hertz, that's why in other countries they don't use the 60 hertz because they know that interferes with that of the heart, that magnetics. Mm -hmm. um, so these tools are transforming that to be beneficial. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So can I, can I um, pop in a few things? I don't know if uh, I, um, I'm taking you off track or not, but I'm just sort of reading what people are saying and also um, the things that I would like to know about. And if I want to know about them, I'm thinking maybe other people might. <laughs> um, uh -huh. So we had something about the copper. Why, why copper? Um, somebody else was using brass. So maybe you could touch on, you did, but um, touch on the different... Uh, um, metals and you know sort of copper silver gold type thing certainly um you know and like our brass rods it it can be any material as far as a straight line measure goes but when you're making the tensor rings um copper because copper because the way that is that micro crystal and most metals are a crystalline structure all metals as far as i know but copper, because of that crystal structure within there, when they draw the wire, it aligns all that up in a one-way direction flow. Mm -hmm. And so, again, that's where we get more of our physical powering is through the alignment of the crystalline structure in the copper when we make the rings. Mm -hmm. um, 
we've tried silver before, you know, sterling silver. And in the beginning, it just was not producing. It wouldn't hold the field. Mm. Um, now it is. I mean, we're, we're in a whole new world now. But I mean, part of that was working with the consciousness of, of the, of the um, silver that allowed that to hold that tensor field mm -hmm. because as all crystals have consciousness as certain plants have consciousness we that's where we find that we do all this big work is using is through working with other consciousness mm -hmm. um so anyway for the for the copper it's just because of that crystalline structure that allows that that better flow within there mm -hmm. so um Beautiful. Brass, I know people have used brass too, but I never felt a ring made out of brass. Yeah, no, neither have I. And uh, I used to collect uh, uh, the bangles of um, Africa. So the kings used to wear the, you know, the you know, they'd wear the copper and brass. Um, but copper was always a resonance with me as well. And my dad, just to throw in um, something, uh, because when I was making my... Um, I call them chi generators or power generators. Um, uh, I went to copper, but I was, I, was, I was doing something different than you um, in a way, uh, uh, you know, and creating that piezoelectric with the different uh, things into um, little sort of amulets, I suppose. But he said to me, um, because he's a magnets or magnetics uh, expert uh, and electrical engineer, and he said, um, do you know why you're not using gold? And I was like, yeah, because I, I didn't even think about it, really. I just went to copper. And he told me a story about um, he worked on some of the first computers, right, because he's in a defence force. And he said that back in the day, <laughs> before I was born, um, they didn't let the women go near the uh, big A-frames when they were pregnant or when it was the moon time, right? So it wasn't, um, you know, a gender thing, uh, you know, men are better than women, that sort of thing. It was because they knew that the gold in the aim frame that held the information when the woman's energy at that particular time went near it could wipe it. Wow. And so <laughs> when I'm making, isn't that fascinating? I mean, that's just my little uh, very simplistic way of um, uh, explaining it, but there's a lot more to it than that. But when I was working and doing, doing my work, um, if we're making uh, tools that are to um, uh, sort of build energy, um, uh, so if you're meditating or if they're in your field, so I've got one that's um, a triangle. Um, I don't make them anymore, so I'm not selling anything or anything. I just want to... Uh, plant this seed for you to sort of um, see where we go with it. Um, and when my animals pass over or when uh, people are passing over, the triangle one is put at the head. And the geometry, so here's a question to, to put back to you because it's uh, the geometries that I was making, the triangle, the square, the circle, um, you know, very similar to the flower of life and whatnot. But they're 2D versions of the 3D. They're just flattened. So the, so the image behind you, um, you've got the flat and you're standing on. Um, can you maybe touch on that a little bit? That like how, because I'm not sure that people understand, well, some will and some won't, what these, like it just looks like a flat geometry, but maybe go into how. Does that make sense? Was that a question? <laughs> Um, yeah, it, it does kind of like how you have a that two dimensional aspect and it represents a three dimensional. Yeah. So like the seed of life, it has it has six of the circles with the one in the center of seven. So if you actually took this and you turned it into the three dimensional object which it represents, it would actually be the spheres. And so it would actually create a, a cube. It would have actually eight spheres on it. And that would be, you know, some consider that as those original eight cells within the body, things like that. Um, so the, the seed of life with the seven rings is actually a representation of eight spheres, which is, again, that cube. And like the flower of life, 
is where we've actually expanded that flower of life um, because where you find that laser etched onto some of the megalithic structures around the world, um, it's always depicted as the 89 circles with two rings around it. And, and that to me, going back to the geomancy where the pyramids are part of the, the grid system on the earth, where that flower of life was for this third density reality. Yes. And so because it's contained within those two circles, we take the circles off of it and then it expands into the 127 ring matrix, which we call the fruit of life. Mm. So when you look at that, that becomes that 64 tetrahedra grid that Nassim Haramine talks about um, that we recognize as Metatron's cube. Um, because that is the, the Merkaba field that most people that I know of that work with Metatron, they usually see him stepping out of this great big 64 tetrahedra uh, grid Merkaba. Um, mm. Mm. And so, you know, and so these, these 2D versions, even like that triangle, you know, um, and the square are all that, that two dimensional version of the three dimensional object. Yeah. which again, that geometry contains information. It's a higher math mm. you know, that comes mm. through. Mm. So. Beautiful. I love that. And uh, I just want to say, uh, I hope you don't mind me putting my little stories in because, uh, you know. Mm. <laughs> um, so I, I see the gateways, so um, the geometries and uh, lately, uh, it was actually in Arizona, so I was there a few months ago, and the geometry shifted and i um it took me uh you know when i got back home to australia uh to uh try to work out what the that geometry was because it's it moves it's not stagnant so when i'm seeing you know it's it's moving and d doing its thing and but it was clearly a new uh well maybe not a new geometry but something new that i haven't seen before i hadn't been able to see before so um, by going to these, so I go to um, different places. So it's like, you know, gatekeeping, go to these different places. Mm -hmm. So as I'm going there, I'm shifting um, code, but I'm also picking up code. So then I was able to see this new geometry. So I love that you've said that. Um, and I just wanted to place that because uh, it's information for me, but it's also trying to give another version of what you're saying as well for people who are, uh, you know, more into the woo woo stuff. <laughs> sure. sure. But, well, um, that new, yeah, it's definitely new geometries coming in. Um, there is. Yeah. And, you know, and that's part of what I touched on about the Merkaba, um, you know, cause the Merkaba is one of the first things that I started getting into after science stuff. Because um, the, the work that like uh, Drunvula Melchizedek has done with scientists is that they found that star tetrahedron, that, uh, that eight-pointed star, they've actually mapped that out around the human body in a microwave range frequency. So mm -hmm. that is something that, you know, science can show these geometries that are energetic that are connected to the physical body. Um, and that's something that's really been an interesting story too, is that was part of how I had that, that logical mind blown was my sister talking about Thoth and the Merkaba and then finding out about Drunvalo Melchizedek's work and the Merkaba and Thoth. And that just blew my mind. I was like, okay, so you're kind of on the level here, you know, other people are talking about this too. And so you know, it used to be like what Drunvalo taught was to reactivate that Merkaba field to make it spin again, it, and then it becomes an electromagnetic field. Um, it used to be that you had to do these mudras and this breath work and these visualizations for two years to get this to function fully. Um, and then it's just, as people are doing this, it becomes easier and easier. I mean, it used to be that all adults were born with that functioning Merkaba field, but then it stops spinning 48 hours after birth. And, but yet it's what we see are making these crystal kids so special mm. as they kept their fields functioning. Um, so part of 
the work that we do too is reactivating that Merkaba field. You stand in our chamber, it does that. You hold one of our rings with intention, it does that. And we have a bunch of videos out there too. Mm. Um, because a lot of that does seem kind of, you know, again, experiential. Um, I've, you know, as I've assisted. Well, it has thousands, to be, sorry, it has to be experiential. You, yes. It has to be. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> yeah. just go read a book, you know. <laughs> All right. Yeah. 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 So we have a website out there too, crystalmercaba.com, because as my sister works with Thoth and Metatron, I've been able to confer with them over the years as I teach people the Merkaba activations to where it just gets easier and easier. Mm. And so instead of doing it over the course of two years or an hour workshop, we can do it with one breath, basically. Beautiful. So. Beautiful. I love that. I just um, wanted to add as well that because I've just sort of, there's lots of um, streams in the chat. Uh, so I'll just touch on a few things that um, the, the energy I'm talking about is not the spider web. It's literally uh, geometries, uh, you know, like what's behind um, Brian's head, um, like uh, Metatron's cube, things like that, but then in motion and movement, um, it's, it's, difficult to describe you have to experience it now the thing that i was going to say is that uh all of this energy is you <laughs> all of it is you all the geometries are you everything you see feel sense now it is you right so as you raise in your frequency yeah brian as you raise in your frequency you see feel sense no more so then we can understand more and then it happens again and then we understand more so that so brian's bringing in new information because his field's raising he's understanding himself yeah right more, right and then able to see himself the self more and then going because it's uh you know like we said yesterday as you are the world shall be it's that inside is you is the field so when i'm seeing new geometries it's because that geometry is activated within me Right. And I'm just right. seeing it in the field because the field is my, is me. So I just wanted to touch on that because there's a few little um, questions in there about, um, about that. So, so. Right. Yeah. Cause as you raise your frequency and vibration, I mean, we know that there's so many different spectrums of light and so many different spectrums of sound and all these other things that are out of our perception. But as, we are able to raise our own frequency and vibration. Um, we're able to perceive all these other things. Um, you know, when I first started this a decade ago, that was one of the big things I wanted to see. I wanted to, to have all those things. And, and now, you know, that's part of it is that sight, the, the knowing, the understanding. Um, and one of the biggest things that we teach about is the sacred space of the heart. And that's something that I haven't mentioned about the tools is that all these tensor fields that is part of the programming within those fields is that it helps you to bring the consciousness from here right behind the pineal gland and bring it back down into the physical heart. Because like heart math, they teach about how we have actual brain cells within the heart and that heart consciousness. Mm. So these tools just assist us from moving from here back into that heart space where we began you know, at birth. Mm. And so that, and the reason I mention this is because that is where we find our light. And that is where we find that more connection with, with the truth, because just like people who do dowsing, if you're here, then with your consciousness, you are more influenced by your ego or by other energetic attachments or other energies in general, mm. where when we go into that sacred space of the heart, it is only us that can be there. And so we have less of that outside influence where we can ask our questions and get a better answer without asking them from here and being taken down a rabbit hole. Yeah. Which seems real. And that's, that's what, you know, a lot of people do is that, and that's what humans do. We're Try wired for that. Is we, we go, oh, uh, what? And that's the thing. If you're seeing something, so there's been some questions about what, what people are seeing 
And uh, when you when you start to see things as you're raising in your frequency uh, at different, I call it frequency, but planes, dimensions, what, whatever you want to call it, as you're mm -hmm. doing that at every level or every stage, there's different geometries, there's different information, there's different sounds, there's different. Um, it's different, okay. And so, you know, when you understand that, you'll sort of know where you are. But um, uh, oh, I just lost my train of thought then. Um, so, yeah, I've lost my train of thought. I don't well, know where yeah, I was going in, there. In the perceptions, too, I mean, like we work soul to soul with people, and the soul will present differently to each person, yeah. um, you know, because it, it, uh, it uses our own filters. So no matter, no matter what, we still have our filters in how things come in for us to perceive are there for us to understand in a certain way. Um, so as you go to an energy worker and you're looking at something, every person can see it a little bit differently just based on perception. You know, the blind man seeing the elephant style of thing. And so it's really nice when you can get together with more people in your energetic circles and you're all working from the heart space yeah. And you get a better idea and feel of whatever it is that you are, you know, working on, whether it's a physical ailment or something energetic in the environment that you're trying to figure out. Um, it's just nice to have those energetic circles where you're all operating from the heart space. Mm -hmm. That really helps, helps everybody grow. That's right. So. And, and understand yourself. Oh, that's what I was going to say. It's about remembering I say remembering, so pulling the aspects of the self back together to that <laughs> to that space, rather than remembering um, as in memory. Uh, yes. You know. So, uh, would you like to put out to a few questions from? Um, we've got some viewers and. Well, certainly. If you got, or or while we wait to see if there's any questions come up, um, is there anything else that you wanted to share that? Uh, that um, you haven't uh, certainly um, you know again to me I love the consciousness work because that is what pushes the envelope for all this stuff but you know really to talk about the tools more um, because this is something too Cynthia that you know we have this one for a link on your website I think you have on there if you use rhombus when you go to our website if you make a purchase um, you get one of these free Wi-Fi rings. Um, these guys, these Wi-Fi rings, they're made out of the golden fire as well. And it's something that you put over your Wi-Fi antenna, and it uses that, that frequency as a carrier wave for this energy. You can also put this over light bulbs, and it will use the visible light spectrum as a carrier wave for this. You can put these in your fuse panel, and it will use the electrical. Um, We've had professional dowsers who go out and they'll use their, their dowsing rods and they'll find um, on a scale where they find those big green transformer boxes in your neighborhood, they'll yeah. find where there are negative thousands. They put one of these rings on it and it changes all of your electrical panels in that neighborhood to positive hundreds. <laughs> so I mean, it's, um, anyway, yeah, these little $16 rings were, were gift and free with an order uh, through Twisted Sage. Uh, through yeah, Cynthia's website yeah. there. Yeah, and I, I just got one of those too. So um, I'll, I'll be reporting on my, my little gadgets because um, uh, I'm a dowser. I'm a, you know, I'm an energy worker, so I'll be able to <laughs> see what's going on. But I can already feel it. As soon as I saw that, uh, that infinity or the, the eight, I call it, um, on your image last week, I was like, oh. <gasps> <laughs> I could already, um, yeah, see what that was about. What a wonderful gift! Thank you. And look at the website. I mean, I I've looked at most of it. Uh, I still want to do some more um, investigating because there's uh, they're just beautiful, absolutely beautiful to look at. They're stunning. Um, you know, I might be a little biased because I love copper and I love uh, geometry. <laughs> <laughs> and you yeah. put it together and I'm like, yeah, there's my new pair of shoes. I, I would just buy copper in, in geometry <laughs> and go barefoot. Um, uh, so are there, any, are there any questions? Can't see. There, the questions that I saw earlier I think I've asked. Um, 
And please do check out our resources page because we have a lot of things that we put out on YouTube. And, and of course, we know as energy changes, a lot of this stuff is in the old energy. So we're slowly taking off a lot of the older stuff and putting on newer things. And we try to, you know, offer up as much of this knowledge, information, and activations that we possibly can because, you know, like I say, what my driving passion is, is for the entire collective, not just the earth. I mean, all of us. And so the, the tools are just the training wheels to assist us. Uh, someone's asked, where can we find the new energy web? Well, um, that's an interesting question. We're actually, what I've seen it as is this universal light field. So this field of energy, it is connecting the sacred hearts. Now we actually, I do a meditation. Um, I can get it for like seven bucks on the website, but we're going to eventually change that right now. We go soul to soul with every person who purchases that. And that just kind of helps to offset our time and energy to do that. But it, again, the hundredth monkey thing soon we'll be able to just release that for free. But basically what it's doing is once you go through that meditation and you have that sacred heart activated, we're seeing that as we activate the sacred heart within everybody within our energetic circle, that is creating this new field. Mm -hmm. And then we become the bridge between this new field of that new earth matrix into here because we've seen that all these old grids are just clearing off the planet That's because nice. they were part of that third density reality. Mm -hmm. And so we as the awakened human are the ones that are becoming the new anchors for these new grids. And then we are manifesting and creating from the heart space with our higher soul selves, with everybody else that we're connecting to. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really where we're seeing all of this going. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, I think, we're seeing where all of it is. <laughs> I don't. I don't think it's going. It already is. It's here. It's already here, and it's already <laughs> happening. Yeah, no, it, no, is. it is. I mean, you it know, I, I just think we need to be clear about that. Uh, that it's already here, and the the only uh, thing is that uh, it's about raising your own frequency, doing your work, uh, or or being in that your own stillness to be able to access your information or access your personal grid, your personal web um there's there's many many different types of energy uh and energy um in our physical and our energetic systems you know so there's much more than than uh even a lot of energy workers know about you see so and i love how you've said that you're upgrading all the time because that's the thing it's like once it's almost like once we've said it, it's old news. It's moving that right. fast. And so right. we just need to be um, constantly, even though a lot of it is ancient um, technologies, it's coming back around because we're, uh, or we're, it's not really coming back around. I see it as um, we're just able to hold it now. You know, it's always been there. We're just able to hold it. We're able to see it and it's, sort of coming up to be in our faces. <laughs> Wait, would you say that? What's your um, take on that? I, I would too, because, you know, like this little guy right here that I'm wearing, it's uh, Untak, the key. It's the Ankh of the now time. We just did a reading on it where this is an ancient, ancient tool, but it's also presenting as bright and shiny and new. Um, mm. You know, so there's a lot of this stuff that is crossing those timelines and that's, and that's another story and another conversation all together. <laughs> yeah. Through those timelines. And, and also where you talked about that we are actually there right now and that we're just kind of going through the motions and being that bridge between here and there um, because there really is no space here because everything is quantum, everything's connected. So we really are here. We can perceive here, but we're all along this whole space as well. That's it. So, that's it. Um, yeah. Yeah. And uh, some of the other questions, because we'll finish up now. I don't want to keep you too much longer. Um, some of these questions you've already answered, but they might have come in later uh, about the water. How long does it take um, for a litre um, to restructure water? That's questions. Sure. So, you know, like with um, 
with GDV photo, photo imaging, where we're able to see the, the charge of water, um, you put a ring around the water so that the water is within that column and it can clear the memory of the water within just instantly. And it also raises the frequency and vibration of the water. But to do the, the physical work with it, we usually recommend to leave your container of water within that ring for like eight hours. And it just depends on the mineral content of the water too. But when I give somebody a ring, it's really fun to have them do an experiment with put one glass of water within this ring and one glass not and let it sit overnight and you can do a taste test as well as feel the difference with that water. Mm -hmm. um, and as water is quantum, you can use a, a little four inch ring and you can put it on a five gallon water or a 20 gallon, 30 liter, whatever. And as that water is quantum, the water that is within the field of that ring, that energy spreads out through that whole field. Um, well, you, could do a, you could do your water tanks. A lot of people have got water right. tanks, you know? And, mm. Yep, the cisterns, exactly. And, you know, again, the Dances with Water book is such a fantastic book. Um, and again, we're in it on a bunch of the pages talking about the rings. And they're the ones who have done a lot of that research on the water energetics, including the tensor rings. Um, and this is on our website, too. But Dances with Water is really a fantastic place to go for a lot of resources for water, too. Mm. Okay, there's one more question that I just uh, saw that um, I think is uh, a good one. Um, where can we find the – so we've got the link to your main website. You've uh -huh. mentioned some others along the way, but somebody was asking where that new updated information was. You mentioned uh, let's see. Uh, the website to find the updated. So, I mean, we have the Crystal Merkaba is one that if you're interested in the Merkaba fields, crystalmerkaba.com has some of that updated information. Um, the global love and gratitude grid.com because we've actually created grids and you can use anchors of light and cell phone towers and water tanks. And again, using that light is really a fantastic way to change everything, EMFs and water. Um, the, uh, the other website that we have, sacredmeasures.com is a place where we list all the different measurements we haven't listed the golden fire yet. Um, we will eventually for sure. Um, but you can find all the different measurements that we use. And there's other people out there that are making tensor rings too. Now tensor rings is something that we coined that term tensor ring. When Slim brought it into the world, he called it light life rings and his widow, you know, has the light life rings. And instead of, you know, we wanted to get this out in the world and make sure that it was not copyrightable. We wanted to make sure that this became public knowledge. So mm -hmm. Slim you know, came to me after death. You know, I've never met him in person, but we, we work with him after the fact. And, you know, he urged me to make the videos on how to make the rings and to hand out the measurements to everybody so that this becomes the public knowledge. Um, and I'm not sure if that was the updated information you were looking for. The twistedsage.com website has most of that updated information. Our YouTube channel has a lot of older stuff, but like I say, as time permits, we're putting on new videos yeah. and, and screen. I think out. that's what you were talking about. You were saying about that. So uh, I'll put those. You've got the, the main um, website, the Twisted Sage, yeah, on, Twisted the, Sage. Um, on the emails, and it'll be on the uh, emails with the re um, replay. And I'll put these ones on as well. And I'll also put them on the, um, our, our group's Facebook page. Uh, if you're whoever asked that question, I've lost it now because it moves as we go. But, um, yeah. Yeah, and, and you can find it all on Twisted Sage. So yeah, that's yeah. our umbrella site. So you can get yeah. to everything. And I'm sure that you can um, uh, send... Uh, Brian, <laughs> a message. I don't want to overload yeah. you, but <laughs> <laughs> you sure um, can. Yeah. Uh, okay. Is there anything else that you um, feel needs to be in the field right now? Sacred space of the heart. Try to come from the heart in everything that you do. I know it's hard sometimes, but 
You know, that's where we are creating this new world. It's not from here where we are controlled by fear and manifest out of the fear and out of necessity. Come to the heart space because that's where we are all creating from right now. So that's, that's the only thing I got to say. Uh, well, I think that's the only thing that needs to be said. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Thank you so much. What a pleasure. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, this has been fun and uh, informative and um, I'm inspired and I'm ignited and I, um, uh, I guess I'll be uh, twisting copper and um, creating. <laughs> <laughs> we have, we have Dan Winter tomorrow, which is so synchronistic um, because it leads on from some of the things that you've talked about in relation to the hydrogen atom and things like that, you know, the geometries of all of that, which um, uh, is mind blowing and uh, so significant. And I love that we had Christopher Timms last night who was talking about um, these new frequencies and he's made the tuning forks and he's called it, the, the, I think they were called the temple range, uh, based on these cubits of the wow. um, different places. So he's, that's, he's mm. only just uh, started that, sold the first set in December. Um, and then we have you on talking about the same measurements, but how you're, you've made a tool or tools and how it's come through to you. And then tomorrow we have uh, Dan Winter, who's got the physics of it. And uh, the, basically uh, the physics of bliss, <laughs> which is about the heart being in the heart center, igniting, um, well, you know, I won't go into it, but, uh, so it's just lovely how it's just automatically um, flowed with information to build on on it from the, how the tools and how the information's coming in. It's beautiful. I love it. So I thank you so much and um, uh, thank Brenda too. I'm intrigued by, by, <laughs> her, by her and uh, would love to um, know more about her as well. Um, maybe another time but yeah thank you brian thank you thank you everybody for being here mm -hmm.